I'll admit I, I wasn't really looking forward to seeing Almost Christmas. I'm pretty sure I said this in our review for Love the Coopers, where I, I'm just kind of sick of this kind of movie, because it really does seem like every year this movie comes out. Dysfunctional family gets together for the holidays. You have about a, a cast of 20 names in a movie, all to come together to make me wish I was just sitting home and watching Christmas Vacation instead. You know, last year we had Love the Coopers, which the one thing I remember about that is that it had a talking dog in it for some reason. And here we have Almost Christmas. And you know, for the first 20 minutes of this movie, I was like, you know, I'm actually not minding this. Like, I've seen this kind of movie before so many times and done better too, but there, there was things it was doing right. Uh, the patriarch of the family is Danny Glover, so it's about him and his kids and his grandkids. They all come together for their first Christmas after the mom passes away. So there is some good drama there. There's a good montage at the beginning of the movie where it's playing Ain't No Woman Like the One I Got by the Four Tops. Danny Glover is excellent in this film. It, I, I, at first I thought, you know, okay, I, th I think I'm in for something all right here. It's just a, a family coming together after some sadness has happened. And they all, of course, have their issues, as everyone in these movies do. One of them is a sports star who's addicted to painkillers. One has gone through a divorce. The other has a husband who's cheating on her. So yeah, they, they certainly all have their issues. But then the movie just lost me. <laughs> this this movie is kind of awful. It, it it's awful because there there man there there are some parts that work. It honestly seems like at first they may have had an all right script, but then someone came along and just jizzed TBS sitcom juices over it and filled it with sitcom tropes, characters, jokes, pause for laughter moments. They they literally pause for laughter in this film. There's moments where they'll say a joke and then it cuts to a close-up of them doing nothing as if they are literally pausing so the audience can laugh. And when I say that there's sitcom-type situations in the film, like, man... I'm not lying. Like, J.B. Smoove is basically playing a comic relief from a sitcom. So is Monique. Everyone else is kind of on a down-to-earth level in this film, except for these two, who are there to provide just laugh track material for the audience. And even that almost doesn't work, because J.B. Smoove is playing the character who's cheating on his wife. It's like we're supposed to sort of hate this character, who's kind of acting like a jerk throughout a lot of it, but then they also make him the comic relief. So I don't know if this movie wants me to like him. Am I supposed to hate him? By the end, he's just getting chased around with a gun. Like, there's jokes in the film where... The girl is stuck in the window, and then Omar Epps comes to help her out, but he's, like, thrusting and thrusting to get her out the window because her ass is hanging out, and it looks like both of them are fucking. Like, there are moments where it feels like, never mind TBS, there's moments here that make it seem like it's a TGIF sitcom. They're sitting at church, and the little kid, the little kid says something like, are you going to help us put, put the Santa statue on top of the house? And J.B. Smoove's like... When has, on when has your uncle ever let you down? And then both little kids simultaneously are like, always. They do that a lot. Like where the little kids just say the same line as if they're the fucking tanners. There's a lot of like, well, that went well. And then he fall JB Smooth falls off the roof at one point and both kids are like, selfie. Can we go back to Danny Glover dealing with the loss of his wife? He, when the family shows up, he is seriously sidelined through a majority of this film. Just for silly jokes, like they, they, they spontaneously have a dance-off 
in one scene. A choreographed dance-off just out of nowhere. And then they even have the scene where two characters are arguing and there's sexual tension so they're arguing back and forth back and forth back and forth and it ends with a are you as turned on as i am type moment we're just make out session they even do the sitcom cliche of the mystery shows up at dinner unexpected so jb smooth has to avoid the wife and the mistress if the movie could stop with the fucking sitcom tropes for five minutes there would be something there because Danny Glover is very good in this film. Here's how lazy this movie is. Like, an arc in the movie is the fact that they don't know how to cook anything. They don't know how to cook anything because the mom had all of the recipes and she had them hidden inside of a tin and no one knows where this tin is if they can find this tin then you know maybe they can start cooking some of mom's recipes and maybe the food won't taste like shit so that's like kind of a dramatic moment in this where uh there, there's a lot of things dealing with danny glover fixing a sweet potato pie and he can't get it right because his wife made it perfectly and he doesn't know how to cook and so he's trying desperately hard to find this tin and they do find it they do find it towards the end of the movie they find it in the cabinet and it isn't a joke like the one place I didn't look. Like it isn't a joke like that. It's two of the girls are remaking dinner because they do the joke where they put the food in the oven. They're like, well, if I set it two times hotter, that means it'll get done quicker. They do that joke and we know where that's going because we've seen that in every show ever. So then they're they're looking through the cabinet just to kind of get the ingredients to remake what they burnt. And there's the tin sitting right there in the cabinet because apparently no one has looked in the cabinet for this tin that has all the recipes. That's how lazy this movie is. Where do we put this tin everyone's been looking for? I don't know. Let's just put it in the cabinet. Really? You think we should put it somewhere else? Like, I don't know, maybe the chimney, maybe underneath some floorboards. Nah, nah, just put it in the cabinet. Put it in the cabinet. Fuck. God damn. The movie's not very good. <laughs> the movie isn't. I I, I tried. I, I I did because because goddamn some of the acting is is good in this. I I like that. I liked that it book ended with the four tops. You know, I I I, I like I liked that, but. Maybe I was spoiled because I saw Arrival earlier. I, I, I don't know. But this is this is the kind of movie that you just have on, you have on in the background over the holidays because I guess there's nothing else on, which is weird because there's 50,000 other movies like this you could choose from. So there's, an, there's no reason to see this movie. I get, 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 there really isn't. Stick to Christmas Vacation, for the love of God. Stick to Best Man Holiday. Get, seriously. At least in that movie, you got Terrence Howard with a candelabra. All right, so I, that's me getting caught up on movies. I'll see you later.